Hey guys, I want to say I received a phone call from Darrell. It's sad to say he's back in prison. But once I figure out how I'm going to upload that phone call, I'm going to upload it. But until then, we're going to start from that next day. If you haven't seen the last episode, go check it out. Let's get started. Sweet Blake, lose weight. We go to child. We come back to the dorm. Now, when we get back, the transport is just now coming. And it got four dudes in this line, and they just chattering back to back. Yo, it makes shut up and fall in. Now, for a minute, they shut up. And one of them start back talking. What's your name and number, inmate? Mac and Cross, Sarge. Buh, 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 buh. Now you see how I just asked you a question and you talk? That's the only time you talk. We all know and this dude in his three amigos gonna be a problem. Because even though he just got hit with the nightstick, he's still shaking his head from side to side like Stevie Wonder. Now you can tell they did time before because they beefed up. Now, they all come in, everybody get a sign, they rap, and me and my boys, we go on with our day, and we do our morning ritual, which is gather ourselves, get our stuff together, you know, so we can go sit at the table and play cards. Now, we at the table playing cards, and this little guy walks up to us and introduces himself and say, could he play cards with us? What's up, man? My name Greg. Let me get a game of them cards with y'all, bro. Hey, hey, man, come on. Sit down, bro. We all introduce ourselves, and we start playing cards with the dude. Now, I don't just come straight off telling him to join with our crew because that's how everybody else rocking. So I get to telling him how things work up in here and then everybody gonna get to running up to him telling them join with this crew or else. After about an hour of playing cards with us, I tell him, hey, bro, you might want to get down with us, bro. Nah, man, I ain't about joining no gang, bro. Hey, bro, we ain't no gang, bro. This about survival, man. We a family, bro, looking out for each other. <laughs> I, I feel that, bro. I just ain't rocking with it, bro. I'm going to just stay solo dolo, bro. Now, it's safe to say I liked it to do immediately. So I tell him how prison politics work. I say, hey, bro, see these dudes? They going to come behind me. I say, but at the same time, if something happened to you, no matter how much I like you, if you ain't down with our crew, I can't come help you and put their life in jeopardy because when they see me come help you, they going to come help me. Say, bro, I appreciate the offer, bro, but I came in here alone. I'm going to leave alone, bro. So after that, I left it alone and we continue playing cards. Now, we playing cards, and I look around, and I see Lil Juco walking with the four dudes that just came in on the transport, and I later found out their names is Mac and Bird, L, and Ben. Now, I don't know if he been knew these guys, or they just locked in as soon as they got here. Inmates, get in front of your racks now! My name is C.O. Jacket, and I want to tell you something about myself. I could be your friend, or I could be your worst enemy. Oh, she could be my friend, ain't that right, boy? What did that... Ugly banana head, black bumpy face inmate say, You got a little problem, huh? Yeah, you do. Bow! Bow! Oh, my knee! One inmate just twisted his leg. He gonna need a medic. Man, CO Jackie hit this man on his knee and looked like his kneecap spent to the back of his leg. And she called for a medic like he fell and hurt himself. Now, as I was saying, I don't care what you inmates do to each other, but I don't want nobody, and I mean nobody, to play with me. And on that note, she walked out the door before the medics even came and got old boy help. So the medics came in, rolled old boy out, and everybody went back about they day like they normally do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got you. DeAndre had just caught Trent slipping, going to pick up some money. I don't know what Trent was thinking this day, but he was roaming by himself, and DeAndre ran up on him and gave it to him. I'm going to make sure. Yeah, I'm going to make sure. I want everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Now the network boys at the door, banging on the door. Y'all got 10 boys at the door, banging on the door, and DeAndre still getting carried away, Losing his mind on Trent. I need all y'all to get in front of y'all rest. I need man fast, real fast. The inmate is down. Who did this to this boy? Which one of y'all gonna tell me? I don't care how fine CO Jack is. Ain't nobody gonna tell her nothing. So the man came in. When the man came in, they just looked at CO Jack and said, so they put Trent on the stretcher and rushed him out of there. To tell you how sad this woman was, whoever did this to this boy, I hope they roll you out of here the same way. And just like that, 
Theo Jackson walked out and everybody went back on with their day like ain't hey, nothing happened. Now the network boys pissed off. They just looking at DeAndre. We gon' get you, boy. We gon' get you, boy. Now Alex didn't put himself in charge. The whole network crew voted to put Alex in charge. And Alex is a smart dude. Boom, boom. Yeah, bow. I got a crew now. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Boom, boom. Bow, 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 bow. bow. We gon' stump you up. The next time I looked up, the Juco had the four dudes came on the transport. The two dudes that's always running around the prison stealing the wine. They formed the crew and then ran the Jose and the Mexicans and then kicked them under the bed. The only thing that saved Jose was Seal Jackie came in with the pharmaceutical people pushing the cart. You know Juco is a dirty dude. He was going to stomp them out until he couldn't stomp them out no more. So C.O. Jackie going around with the pharmaceutical people, taking people vital signs, asking them to give blood. But at this time, don't nobody want to give blood. So C.O. Jackie storms out of there. And everybody think they got to win until she shows back up with Sergeant Dunbar. Now, let's try this again. I need about 15 people that's going to give some blood. See, what you think? Just because you went and got him? Supposed to give some blood? What the hell you just say, you mate? I ain't about to give up no blood. Bow, 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 bow. You gonna do whatever I tell you to do. An inmate that just came in on the transport started popping his mouth off to Sergeant Dunbar, and Sergeant Dunbar ain't even used a nice stick. He beat this man with his fist and choked this man out. Now, after they got that blood out of 15 people, they left out of there. Now, this particular day, everybody running around loose because Beast and Yanni been working out for about three days, so they ain't really making no noise or messing with nobody, so everybody kind of feel free. Say, look, Greg, bro, man, what's happening, bro? You gonna roll with us or what? Hey, bro, I ain't trying to be disrespectful, but I ain't messing with it, bro, and I mean that, bro. Child time! So we go to afternoon, child, then we make our way back to the dorm. Now, as we coming back to the dorm, I need medicine in the ward now. Inmates, form a line on the wall. They wouldn't even let us enter the dorm after child, so we all wonder what's going on. Now we got the COs coming in the dorm with a stretch in the body bag. Now we know somebody done been rolled out, but we don't know who. Even when they roll the stretch out, we still can't see who it is. That's until we get in the dorm. I go run up to one of the dudes that didn't go to child. Say, my dude, what happened? Remember that dude beast knocked out and then he violated because he said he was going to put that thing on his cousin, C.O. Vonda. Man, that dude rolled himself up out of here. Man, this just getting out of control and it's becoming normal to these dudes. I see dudes laughing and talking. I see dudes slap boxing. Ain't nobody paying attention that somebody just rolled himself out of here because of what somebody else did to him. So now when we get back in the dorm, Everybody is scattered about. They got dudes in the bathroom gambling. We at the table playing cards. Everybody just doing their thing. I'm sorry, homie. Oh, yeah, homes. Yeah. Why Juco in the bathroom gambling with them boys, Jose and them and snatched his little partner up. And when I catch Juki, I'm going to cut his head off. Now, Jose never called Juco Juco. He called him Juki. So, Juco never comes out the bathroom. He don't come out the bathroom until he hear dudes beating on the door. And by that time, they done let his little homeboy have it and back by they racks. Now, the guards come in here and roll this little partner right on up out of here. And you know what Juco do? Go right Right back in the bathroom and start gambling again. Draft man in the building. I need to see Gregory McKenzie. Here I go, Sarge. Now, little Greg just came in on the transport. He don't know what Sergeant Dunbar about, but he headed to the bathroom with Sergeant Dunbar. What's your number, inmate? Now, at the time, little Greg still jolly. He laughing and talking with Sergeant Dunbar, but Sergeant Dunbar ain't cracking no smiles and ain't answer one question. He's straight down to business. Turn around and pull your clothes down, inmate. For what, Sarge? Bow! Don't ask me no questions. You never want to be doing this. Bow! Bow! I can do whatever I want. <laughs> bow! 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 I'm going to tell you one more time, inmate. Turn around. <laughs> bow! 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 He was hitting that man so hard, you would swear that stick was making contact with the bare flow. At first, you heard Greg screaming so loud. Then after a while, he just stopped screaming. But Sergeant Dunbar was still hitting something. Bow, 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 bow. After about seven or eight more swings.
wings. He just walked out the bathroom. I just found the inmate down in day dorm. I need medics now. And the medics just came and scooped old Greg up, rolled him out, and they asked a single question. So after the second person, he didn't rolled out in less than a week. There's no questions from nobody. So after he left out, here comes C.O. Vonda and C.O. Jacket. Now everybody know this on some personal shit, cause C.O.'s don't never come this close back to back. When they come in, they laughing and talking, and C.O. Vonda tells C.O. Jacket, look, I'm about to show you how you do this. And she makes a beeline headed straight for Rodney. Rodney, you better have that money today, or it's your ass today. Man, I need about another day. Rodney, I'm tired of playing with you. I've been too lean. Y'all, come on. Come on. I want y'all to beat his ass until I say stop. Come on, C.O. Vonda. Please, man. What y'all waiting on? I don't want to hear nothing he got to say. Bow. Boom. Boom. Fucking bow. Bow. Boom. Boom. Bam. 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 Boom. Boom. Yeah. 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 If I tried to describe how long she let them boys beat this man out, I'll be here all day. So finally, she stopped them from stomping Rodney. Rodney, by the time that fight come up, you better have the rest of my money or I'm coming pay you another visit. And C.O. Vonda and Jackie leaves out the door. Now, all of a sudden, Yanni didn't stop what he was doing and ran to the back. Him and Beast had been on and off exercising all day, but all of a sudden, he didn't stop and ran to the back. Nobody know what's going on until we see Donnie come walking out the bathroom. Now, for the longest, ain't nobody so much as see Donnie near the bathroom. Now, you know it's normally him and Timo who keeps up with that kind of thing. Nobody can figure out why they never seen Donnie go to the bathroom. Now, my thoughts, he be missing child time to go to the bathroom. But today, Yanni was back there waiting on him to come out the urinals. What you think this is, boy? Donnie ain't even get a chance to open his mouth up. Bow! Yanni then stressed him out. Now, I don't even gotta tell y'all what the rules is when they involved with that activity. They takes him over there by Yanni Rack, and the whole crew runs back off in Donnie. Now, they over there making double show that he know what time it is, because they staying Donnie for about two hours. Now, we gonna fast forward up to when nighttime just hit. Now, we leaving the card table, and when we leaving going back to our rack, Bertrell passed by us with his homeboys, Man, they didn't go right there. Let's get them. Man, nah, man. Not today, bro. We gonna get them, though. Man, no, man. They didn't go right there. Let's get them. Man, chill out. No, bro. Man, come on, man. Bro, no. So he keep going backwards and forward with his homeboy about let's go get them. And his homeboy's just aggravated and telling him, no, man, we gonna get them, but we gonna get them later. And he keep pushing the issue. Bow. Boom, boom. I told you no. Bow, boy. Bow. Huh? Bow, bow. Yeah, bad. We told you no. Bow. Bow, bow. Bow, bow. Bow. Bow, 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 bow. He trying to get his homeboys to come get us, and his homeboys end up stomping him out. And we sitting right there laughing at him. That's why you can't trust nobody in prison, because his homeboys stomp him out. Now, me and my homeboys go get our stuff together, go take our shower, and we come out the shower. So when we come out the shower, we see Lil Juco beating on the door. But ain't nothing going on. So the guard opened the door and let him come out. So he stay outside the door for about two or three minutes. And then he comes back in. But don't nobody really pay too much attention because we don't know what's going on. Now at this time, everybody doing their last little bit of talking before we all take it in to sleep. They go draft, man. That's Sergeant Dunbar coming in with the pharmaceutical people. What's your weight? Okay, no. What's your weight? No. What's your weight? Okay, take him. What's your weight? No. What's your weight? Okay, take him. We need eight more volunteers to get plasma. So they get them eight more volunteers with no problems. And they leave out the dorm. Now everybody go back to talking. Grab him. Grab him. DeAndre tried to grab Tick from the network boss, but Tick was too fast. He struck out screaming and hollering for the network boss. Yo, help me, Alex. Somebody help me. Help me. We gonna get you, boy. We gonna get you. CO's in the building. Now that particular day kept getting stranger and stranger because CO's don't never come in around about this time. And they coming in and they headed straight for Jose. Back up here, mate. I'm about to flip your cot. Now, before I flip this cot, will I find any contraband? No, Sarge, I swear you won't find anything. See, the Mexican smart. 
You ain't gonna never find they weapons. And you can look at Jose face and tell Jose ain't had nothing he was worried about. <laughs> What's this inmate? That's not mine. I swear. That's not mine, Sarge. <laughs> don't you ever lie to me. <laughs> don't you ever lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> don't you ever lie to me. Sarge just tossed Jose Rack and found about an eight inch blade. Do you know how that blade get there? Cause you can tell Jose ain't no nothing about that blade. It's only one person I think knew about that blade. And the whole time saw us beating Jose ass, Lil Juco over there killing himself laughing. When Lil Juco went outside that door and talked to them COs, he had them planted that blade on Jose already. This dude don't know how serious this is. So they take their pictures of Jose with this weapon in his cot. Zip tie Jose and take Jose up out of here. Now, after Jose got taken out the dorm to the hole, Danny stepped up for the Mexicans. Now, he running the Mexicans. Now, at this time, Lejuco still standing over there laughing and feeling pretty proud of himself. That's until everybody started walking by him and saying, now it's time to play how long I can stay alive. That's the game for rats. That's when everybody in the dorm think that you done read it. So everybody in the dorm is off of your head. I mean, every single person, even me and my crew, you all got to go down with this. So that happened and everything kind of calmed down. Now everybody in they racks going to sleep. Ah! Oh, oh, wanna be a rat? Huh? 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 The same crew Lil Juco had to form, then woke him up out of his sleep, hitting him with that blade. And all he could do is holler, y'all told me to do it. Y'all told me to do it. To say they self, they done gave Juco that blade, trying to hush Juco up, but not everybody that heard Juco when Juco said, y'all told me to do this. So y'all all had a part in it of setting Jose up, but now the whole dorm that heard this. So now y'all got to play how long I can stay alive. Now the Juco had to made so many enemies, it took them about 20 minutes before anybody even went to the door to go get the guards. Everybody get in front of they racks. Everybody in front of your racks. So the maidens come in and roll the Juco up out of there. So as soon as the guards leave out and close the door, all you hear everybody saying, y'all boys sleep tight. Yeah, it's on from here. Y'all better sleep light. We're going to pick the next story up from right here. Been doing a lot of ripping and running today. Got a lot done. So we're going to pick up the story when we come back from right at this point when they tell these boys, Y'all better sleep light, because this four of these boys got to play How Long Could I Stay Alive. All right, see y'all soon.